Hello everyone, and welcome to part 8 of how to make breakout in Unity. So last time we just did bug fixes with to solve a few issues with our ba ball's movement, such as how it could be relaunched during mid-flight, and it could occasionally get off trajectory if hit in a certain way. So on this one, we are going to make our scoreboard and our lives counter. Now, what I'm going to do is create an empty game object, and I'll just name it Game Manager. I'll center at 0 and 0, and what this game object is going to do is just keep track of your score and health variables, or lives variables, and it'll keep that data persistent between scenes. And the reason we do that is because I want to have my different blocks here to be different arrangement of these blocks to be in different scenes that way I can easily just create a new scene put all the camera and and uh, heads up display in it and then just start placing the blocks instead of having to do a strange thing where you just move the camera to your other set of blocks or something like that now, as I said before with the game manager, we also want to create a UI text. And this creates several objects such as a canvas, a text, and an event system. Now what the canvas does is just renders your text on some sort of space. We want our space to be over the camera, specifically our main camera for the scene and then you have your text and this text here is going to represent either the lives or our score but for now I just want to get the score working so I'm just gonna name it score and our text here is gonna be score and another thing I want to do is make sure that it is in a position where it can't where it, your ball won't it won't overlap your ball when the ball flies under it so what I'm gonna do is just move it to the position in between the collider that's inside the playable area and the camera that comes just before it cuts off and I also want another text object did that not work I need another text object for the lives counter and what you do is just modify the text in here and just change the font so since I've already gone over how to make text I'll just do it off camera so as you can see here we have our lives and our score one thing I need to do is I'm just going to change the camera to black because this better represents how I want the final game to look. Just have a nice black background and then your blocks and everything. Okay. However, what we're going to do is modify text in our script. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this text also if for some reason it's invisible you need to make sure it's a child of the canvas so now that that's done I want to rename this to score underscore count and for the text I'm just gonna fill it with a bunch of zeros just as a placeholder number alright that looks good and I'll do the same thing over here for lives so copy paste move it down make this a child name it lives count and then just bunch of zeros for a placeholder so if I go to my game view to check how it looks and yeah I think all this looks fine okay now I want to take my event system and my canvas make them children of our game manager and this important thing about the game manager 
is that it's going to remain persistent in between scenes. And what that means is that all the data for your score and lives will remain the same. So if I get a score of 2,500 in this level, in the next one it'll still be a score of 2,500. If I were to lose a life, go from 3 to 2. The next level I'll only have 2 lives, and so on. Alright. Now I'm going to go create a new script. I want to name this GM, which stands for Game Manager. And I'm going to open this and start coding. Also, I want to open this script for our block controller. Because this is going to tell our Game Manager what... In our game manager, I want to declare two variables, one being, well, actually first I need to write using Unity Engine dot UI, and this will give me access to certain features in Unity's UI, so I can declare a public text and I'm going to name one score count. And I'm going to create another public text for lives count. And what these will do is just create a text for our different variables. And then I want a static public int for our score. And then a static public int for our lives. Now that I've added those, in the update function, I want to say score count dot text is equal to our score. However, I have to convert it to a string, and it's a method, and the reason being I can't really, your, the UI text doesn't read integers, so you got to convert it to strings because that's the only thing it can read. And then I need a lives count dot text to be updated to be equal to lives, and don't forget to convert to string. Now back into Unity, I want to go to my game manager. And just make sure it's on the right uh, game objects in the scene. So I can just click this circle thingy and just bring it to the correct ones. One for score, one for lives. Now if I were to click play, as you can see here, it is displaying the appropriate text. But I do not like how it's not centered. This is at position Y. Let's make it 140. This one... Actually, let's make them both 150. Now if I were to go click play, they're nice and centered. Now as for the score count itself, I want it to make it so the score is changed based on the block you break. So in our on collision enter, actually on collision exit where we destroy our game object, I want to go into our game manager, set the score variable to be incremented by a certain value based on a multiplier. And what that multiplier I will do is just decide exactly how many points you get for destroying the block. So I'm just going to create a private integer called score multiplier. Now I'll initialize it to 1 because I'm just going to assume that the block you destroyed is either red, 
is red because that's really our default block that we're going with. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this into our switch statement. And I want cyan to do give you triple the points. And purple and blue to give you five times the points. So similarly to block health, this switch statement will look at the game object's tag and from there decide how much how many points you should be getting when you destroy a certain block. And then here, our game manager.score will be incremented by 100 multiplied by our score multiplier. Now let's go test that. Oh, sorry. Meant to open Unity. So let's go into our play scene. Right now our score is 0 and it becomes 100. However, if I were to use a purple block, I'd go into my block, change the tag to purple, I should get 500 points after I hit it three times. That's two. And let's hope this next one gets it to a third time. And 500 points. Perfect. I'll just change it back to its red. Now, I am going to make it so the lives start at 3 and count down when you lose a certain number of points and count up when you gain a certain number of points. So here in our update function, we're going to make it so our lives increase. And then in our ball control, er, we're going to make it so we lose a life when we go down, when we hit the game object named bottom. Now, this will be really easy to do. All we just do is say game manager dot lives minus minus. And I'll decrement lives and I'll just go into my game view to test it. So I have lives at 3, which is what I initialized it to. And now it's at 2. And then after this, it'll get to 1. And if I go again, however, it'll just keep getting more and more negative. And I don't think we'll have enough time in this video to implement a game over screen. So we'll just focus on finishing the live counter. Now in our update function, we are going to see if our score is divisible by a certain value that will work for our, or we are going to test if our score is divisible by a certain number in order to get a free life. And we want it to be any factor of 1,000 or 10,000. Actually, 10,000 might be a little ridiculous. Let's do 2,500. We'll fiddle with the, uh, how much you need. So the way you find if something is a factor of another value, you use the modulus, which is the percent symbol. And we are going to see if score modulus well, for testing purposes, 100 is equal to 0. And this will take our score value, divide by 100, and see if the remainder is 0. If it is, then it's divisible by 100. And for testing purposes, I just want to print new life. Now let's go into our Unity menu and test that. So when I hit this ball, I should get a new life, which I did. Way too many times, though. We want to gain one new life when your score... Wait, is it just always doing that? 
Yeah. So that's a problem. Oh. We also want to check if score is not equal to zero. Because zero divided by 100 is going to be a huh, zero. Now if I click play, I'm not getting any new lives. And now I am. So the thing about this new life is that we need to print it once. And that's really just to make sure that our live count will be only incremented one time. So what I'm going to do is create an integer for next life. And what this needs to be equal to is our current score plus 100. And this 100 will be changed to be whatever, actually, it should be plus equals our score plus 100. And what this will do is check what our score is. No, wait, next life equals score plus 100. Sorry about that. It's late when I'm recording this. So our next life is going to be equal to score plus 100. And this will just see if you are eligible for another life. And what this does is goes in here. And we just want to initialize it to the score you need to get your first new life. So I'm just going to check if your score is greater than or equal to next life. So what this is saying is we make a new variable named next life, set it to 100, and when your score is equal to whatever value is needed for your next life, we decide so that you need to get another 100 points to get a new life. So I'm just going to create a second block just to test that. Did not copy it. There we go. Now I'll just move it here. So this should print new life once. And it did not print it once. So I went and did some debugging work. And I'm not entirely sure what's causing this. So. And this video is going on kind of long. So I just want to solve this bug. And then upload. Yeah. I'm going to try a different approach than what I was thinking I should do. Instead, we're going to check if next life is less than score. Wait. Yeah, we want to check if next life is set to s is going to be less than score. If it is, just for pe testing purposes, I want to print new life. And I also want to take next life and increment it by score. Actually, increment it by another 100. Now in our play window, hit this and it does not print that time except now okay yeah this video has been going on for almost 20 minutes so I am going to figure out what I'm doing wrong as I said before I am recording this a little later than usual so maybe I'm just not in the right state of mind so in the next episode, we are going to finish our lives counter, and then we're going to move on to making this scoreboard and lives counter persistent between scenes. That way it'll be really easy to just make the level. We just bring in those game objects, assemble our blocks in the pattern we want, and we just... that's about it. Weird. Yeah, can't imagine the series will have more than four episodes. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you tune in for the next one, where we finish our lives counter. Anyway, goodbye.